Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a leaf pattern like this in Adobe Illustrator and the focus of this pattern is to get a really intense quantity of objects in our pattern. So we're going to start by making our layers. I have a document already created here in Illustrator. It's just a document that's 1920 by 1080. It doesn't really matter how big your document is because this is going to be a vector pattern. I'm going to select the ellipse tool. I'm just going to drag out an oval and this is going to become my leaf. I'm going to the direct selection tool. I'm going to click on this topmost anchor point and I'm going to turn it into a corner point by just clicking on this icon here which just makes it pointed. And this one I'm just going to squeeze up a little bit so it becomes a little bit more leaf shape. Selecting back over the leaf, I'm going to apply some color to it. So let's go to the swatches panel. Don't have much in the way of swatches here, but I'm just going to choose this one. And then I'm going to the stroke. And if you don't see the stroke options here, sometimes they disappear. Don't know why. You can always get to them using the stroke panel, which of course you can get to by choosing window and then stroke. But if they appear on the options bar here, it's exactly the same thing. So now I've got my leaf, now I want the veins for my leaf. I'm just going to use the pen tool, it's just the simplest tool here because we're just clicking. So I'm going to click and then shift click to create a straight line. I'm going to press escape because I just want to move away from that. So I've got the line for my leaf. Notice that I'm making everything super big. You want it to be bigger than your leaf. Now I'm going to try for one of these sort of veins in the leaf. I'm starting out over here, not trying to connect it to this shape here. I'm just going to click and click to make one of the veins. Again, press escape and go back to my selection tool. For the moment, let's just drag this out of the way here. We're going to object, transform and reflect. Now that allows us to create a second vein. We're just flipping over or reflecting over the vertical here, but we want the original plus the one we just made. So click copy. And I'm just going to drag this over so these two pretty much intersect. So I want to make these into a fill shape. Right now they're a line. So we're just going to object and expand to expand them into a filled shape. And now I'm going to the Pathfinder palette. You can get to that by choosing Window and then Pathfinder down here. And I'm just going to click on Unite. So basically now I have a black filled shape that is this V shape. Let's put it in position where it's going to be one of the veins of my leaf. Again, I'm going to select it. I'm choosing Object, Transform and then Move. Now, this jumps everywhere. So what you want to do is start off by zeroing out the horizontal and vertical. And then when you tab away, you'll see that your piece goes back to where it came from. So I'm going to move it on the vertical and we're going to move it in a negative direction because negative goes up. So I'm just going to start moving it negatively. I think about minus 60 for me is going to be pretty good. I'll click copy, just double check that that looks all right. That looks fine to me. Now if I reselect this line and press Control or Command D, then I'm just going to repeat that transformation. So I want lots of veins for my leaf. Now I can put my leaf back roughly where it's going to go. Just make sure that I have an idea as to where it will go. Let's go and get the Layers panel, Window Layers, or you can just find your Layers panel if you have it here. What we're going to do is lock the leaf shape itself down because I want to work on just all of these lines, but I want to be able to select everything really easily. And if I lock the leaf shape down, then it can't be selected. So I'm going to select over all of this. I'm going to Object Expand. I'm just going to expand it. it, comes into lots of groups, don't worry about that. Just go straight to your Pathfinder palette and click Unite. And that's going to end up with just one path. It is a filled shape, so you can see this is its fill, it doesn't have any stroke and it's just this sort of fishbone shape of lines that are going to be the veins in our leaf. Now at this point you can just adjust this if you want to. We'll unlock the path for our leaf because we're going to select over everything all over again. And we're going to use the Shape Builder tool. And this is why we wanted to make these veins a lot bigger than the leaf, a lot wider than the leaf, because it's just going to be a whole lot easier to get rid of them. I'm holding down the Alt key on a PC, Option on a Mac. I'm just dragging over these lines. And as I drag over them, you'll see they just disappear. So what we're left with is a path that is the exact shape of the veins of our leaf. 
Now for our pattern what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a symbol so we don't need to do anything else with this although in general circumstances it would be smart to put those in a group so they travel together but as soon as we make them into a symbol they're going to travel together anyway. So let's just click and make a new symbol and we're just going to check in here that in actual fact we have a symbol that is the shape of our leaf. I'm just going to delete this one, I don't need it any longer. So now to put our symbol down we're going to the symbol sprayer and it's a little sort of spray can over here. If you double click on it you can adjust its settings. Now I have it set to 200 pixels that's sort of about this size if you need to make it bigger or smaller you can. I have intensity set to 8 and symbol set density set to 5. If you want it pretty dense you could even reduce that to say 4. You want to show this brush size and click OK. Then what you're going to do is start putting down some leaves. Now at the moment you'll see they're all the same colour and they're all pointing in the same direction but that doesn't matter too much. So just make sure that you cover pretty much everything. You don't want lots of white gaps in your symbol. Now this is a symbol set. You'll see that when I select it, I'm selecting absolutely everything in the layers panel. It's just called symbol set. I'm going to leave it as a set for now because we want to use it, some of the other symbol tools on it. So I'm going to click on the symbol sprayer to show this panel. And what I want next is the symbol spinner tool. I'm just going to target that. Now if we double click we can set the spinner options there. In actual fact the exact same settings as we were using for the symbol sprayer and this is the symbol spinner so you can make changes to them at this point if you need to. Now when you just click on something with the spinner you'll find it doesn't do anything. You have to actually sort of like move it so you're going to put your finger on the left mouse button click and drag and that's going to move these things. Now this is a pretty inexact sort of science so I've got a better system for moving these around in a minute but you might just want to play a little bit with the symbol spinner. And we're going back to the symbol tools here and we're going to choose the symbol stainer. Now the symbol stainer tool allows us to change the color of our symbols. So I'm going to the color picker here. Let's just make it a bit bigger and I'm going to choose a color to start painting on my symbols. So again we're working with the same settings of 8 and 4. If you find it's too intense then you can just set those back to something different. So the longer you press with the symbol stainer tool the more color you're going to get in. But you can see that just even by clicking on these leaves I'm now getting a slightly different look to the leaves. Let's just find one that we can click on here a lot. Even if I click a few times I'll start bringing it closer to this color here. So you can change the color at any time. You can go for a different color and start just trying to recolor your leaves. You might even want to go into some autumn or fall sort of colors here. But just be aware that the longer you click the more intense the coloring is going to be. So sometimes some short clicks are better than long clicks. If you want to undo a color you can hold down the shift key and then click on the leaf and it will come back. The color is going to come back a little bit. So this is a really good way of getting some variety of color into your leaves. And you'll probably want to spend a little bit of time with this tool because nothing else short of using a script is going to be as good as this tool is at recoloring these leaves. So I'm just going to make sure I've got some good different color leaves at this point. So clicking back in the layers panel let's have a look at getting things out of this symbol set. So with the symbol select selected I'm going to choose object and then expand and click OK. This gives me a group with leaves in it and each one of the symbols has now become an individual object. Just be aware that these are still inside a group so we will want to get them out of that group. So I'm going to select the group and choose object and then ungroup. And now we have individual objects and there's lots of them here in the document. They're also still symbols. Now you can tell that they're symbols because 
If you know a bit about Illustrator, you know that you should have a set of lines and a leaf color, and it shouldn't look like this. There should be a groove or something. So everything is still a symbol. So I'm going to grab hold of everything, and I'm going to the Symbols panel, and I'm just going to click here on Break Link to Symbol, and that's going to break the link between these objects and the original symbol. Now when we go to the last panel, we've got something a little bit different. Every one of these is actually a group. So there's a path and then there's a group of objects. There's the selection around the edge of the leaf and there's the leaf color itself. So at this point you want to double check and make sure that your symbols are not in a group but you don't want to ungroup them any further because you want each of these leaves to travel as a whole. You don't want it to move separately the leaf color to the actual veins. Now's a good time to rotate these objects a little bit more interestingly than using the symbol spinner. So I'm going to select over everything and I'm going to object transform and then choose transform each. What this tool does is it treats each one of these leaves in isolation and allows us to transform it. So I'm going to transform these and spin them through the full 360 degrees. The problem is that that's actually just spinning all of them around to their original position. But if we click on random, then they're going to spin between some value that is between 0 and 360 degrees and every single one of them is going to spin a little bit differently. Now if you add a little bit of a move, then you'll see that they spin again and they actually move. So you could just move them around a little bit to get the best possible result that you can see. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'll just click OK. Now we've got a set of leaves that are in a slightly different arrangement than we had from the symbol sprayer. And of course you can just select and individually move these leaves if you want to, but it's probably better to do that inside the Pattern Make tool. So let's select over everything and choose Object Pattern Make. So I'm going to leave this icon showing with a line through it. I'm just going to start reducing the width and the height individually. I'm looking for some overlap between these leaves. So I'm just reducing these values a little bit. A little bit of overlap will give me some space to actually move things around. I'm trying to make sure that these are whole values here. Now I have dim copies to 50% selected. I'm just going to unselect that. Let's just zoom out and see what we've got. So this is our leaf pattern right now, but you can see that there are some white areas in the middle. So let's just go back in. I have Show Tile Edge selected. I'm going back to my dim copies because that's going to allow me to see that any of these leaves that are not dimmed are movable. So we can select them and we can move them. Anything that's dimmed, there's simply no point in trying to select them because you can't select them they're part of the pattern. So now I'm just going to grab these individual leaves and put them into position. So just filling up the gaps if you like. And you can rotate these so you can just rotate them into a position. But you will find that if you have created quite a lot of leaves and made them pretty intense that this process will go pretty quickly. If you don't have enough leaves then it's going to be a little bit more difficult. So what I suggest that if you don't have enough leaves what you do is you do something like selecting this one here, hold down the Alt or Option key and just move it into one of the gaps because that's just creating a duplicate of it. I like this leaf so I'm actually going to copy and paste it that's going to be on top and I'm going to rotate it around because I kind of like the color of that leaf. So all you're looking to do at this stage is to just fill in any white gaps. And once you're happy with that you can turn off dim copies so that you can have a really good look at your pattern. I'm going to turn off show tile edges. I'm going to click away and I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so I can have a look at my pattern. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have anything that is obviously attracting my eye and what's attracting my eye right now is this leaf because it's pointing upwards. So I think if I tip it over to the side a little bit 
it's going to be less obvious and I'm not going to see that quite so much through my pattern. I do have some sort of blue lines as well as some color lines through the pattern. Now if you didn't like that you may want to move things around a little bit. I kind of like it but I might do something like just try to move a couple of leaves that are either green or blue into a slightly different position so that we do have some blue leaves in the rest of the pattern. Of course I can also duplicate a leaf and just put it through there just so that we mix those colors up a little bit more. Once you're happy with your pattern you can just click done. Let's go and drag all these shapes out of the way. Let's create a rectangle that is the size of the artboard and just test out our pattern. I have the fill selected here so I'm going to the swatches and this is my leaf design. Now as with all the patterns that you make in Illustrator these are very easily recolored. You're just going to select on the leaf pattern, I'm just making it a bit bigger so I can see it, and you're going to click up here on recolor artwork. I'm going to click on advanced options and then go to edit and this gives me all the colors in my design. Now if I hover over here you'll see that the option is to unlink harmony colors which means that the harmony colors are now linked. So if I drag around I'm going to change all the colors in this document all at once. So I can get some really interesting sort of leaf colors and I could go all the way around to fall for example by just dragging into this sort of orange brown area. And every one of these colors is going to maintain its relationship with each other color. So you do get this nice gradation of of colors but you can also go to the unreal and you could make say blue purple sort of leaves. Now you can also change individual colors by clicking here to unlink the harmony colors and then for example just go and grab one color and just throw in something that's pink into the mix. So you could perhaps just select a couple of these colors and just throw them somewhere a little bit different and that might give you a little bit of variety inside your pattern. When you're happy with what you've got you're just going to click OK. Of course the benefit to this is that this becomes an additional pattern in the swatches panel. So this was our original and this is our newly recolored pattern. Illustrator takes care of actually creating that second color pattern itself. So I hope this gives you some inspiration for creating patterns where you have lots of objects and you want a really sort of dense look to your pattern and doing it fairly easily and quickly using that symbol sprayer tool. If you like carefully researched content like this clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.